if you're in the market for an SUV well you have two options really you can go for the OGs that are 4x4 Endeavors, Fortuners and the likes like that or you can go for the front wheel drive first copies let's say like the Cretas, the Seltoses and the others which are really relevant however you do have a niche in the middle which I would suggest you to actually consider which is this one the Jeep Compass and this one's the facelift so today we are here to check it out and for once by saying we I actually mean we because I got the squad with me Hey. Okay, so driving the Jeep Compass, it's pretty sedate. It's a 2 litre diesel, 170 bhp, around 350 newton meters of torque. But the talking point actually is the interior because that's where the overhaul is. So, guys, check it out. How does it feel? Any first impressions? I like it. Yeah, even I do. The quality is good, leathers are nice. But some things are little like yeah, yeah, center console center but console. totally bearable yeah and i mean i have come from the old generation compass where we took the old generation compass for a nice 13 day drive uh, yeah. into gujarat and we sort of loved the car and the only thing we kind of found missing or you know a little bit of like an okayish thing was the interiors because the interiors were a little too plain for the kind of price segment this car sits in and I think this Compass has kind of done justice with this generation or this facelift. They've kind of done justice on that part. That's just my take on it. You know, uh, to be honest, aesthetically everything is really, really nice. However, some places it feels like it's just going to fall apart. Yeah, I think that's what happens when uh, Americans and Italians make... Uh, two things together. Two, you know, a car together, you know. Yeah. Half of it is like proper, like a good, healthy... Yeah. Chunk of steak and the rest of it is just pasta. <laughs> vents are yeah. irritating. The vents, the vents re behind. Yeah, even I know irritating. That. I cannot the vents get are so small. It's just space. a single vent. <laughs> just a single vent for so much space. This cabin is so big. It's one of the few cabins that I, I've ever sat on and just felt like, okay, this is designed for someone bigger, much you, bigger you than me. You feel like a midget in here. Yeah, exactly. The seats are huge. huge. But this screen is really nice. The screen is nice. Yeah. I actually love the yeah, sunroof. The, is the sunroof is really yeah, a cool. massive sunroof. Yeah. Suspensions are a little stiff though. Little stiff. Quite bouncy. Also, big sunroof doesn't give y'all whoever is buying this car a chance to go out, stick your head out of there. Okay? <laughs> stay yeah, the fuck inside don't. or stay the f inside. Please okay. don't. One thing, one thing I wanted to point out about this car is over here, I'm sorry we are driving but we are driving very slow and with the seat belts off over here there's a button which is specifically given to open the rear hatch on the sunroof it's completely, I don't know what's the point of it because I mean like it just opens the sunroof from the back and when you have to put it back down you have to go on the normal sunroof uh, mechanism so it, that button, that one button is just given there just to lift the sunroof up I'm completely redundant, I mean. Yeah. If you're giving a button, make it in a way which does both the things rather than just do one You can thing understand that the Americans were drunk on beer and the Italians <laughs> were drunk on wine on wine while designing some of these things. But okay, <laughs> no, I mean it's quite Italian to have I mean a cool overhead button yeah, but which doesn't do much. That is redundant. Yeah, completely now, like, for redundant. Example, this is opened up. Now if you have to wear it, bring it back, you have to go on the normal sun. Before the boys started to talk about American hamburgers and Italian pizzas, I quickly kicked them out and started talking about the design. This facelifted version does spruce things up a bit with minor tweaks, including a set of slimmer headlamps, an updated version of the iconic 7-slat grille, a revised front bumper and new 18-inch alloy wheels. There are three new color options as well. More or less, the car looks pretty much the same. They have introduced these new set of rims though, which are diamond cut and since this is the S variant, we get a dual tone paint scheme with grey accents all around. The back end has the same headlights, the roof line is the same and like I said before, Jeep have spent more time fixing the interiors of the compass because that's where the improvements were needed. On the outside, it looks as manly and as adventurous as any other Jeep. Inside the Compass facelift, you do realize where they have spent their R&D money and where the facelift comes from. The inside has been completely overhauled to look like a proper modern car and modernity has been restored in the Jeep Compass. There is a beautiful digital instrument cluster right in front of me that has 
hella information there is a massive 10.25 uh, tft screen which is right in the middle of the dashboard the plastics are uh, questionable in some places and really nice in some places all the piano finishes are great gorgeous very solid however there are some other plastic pieces that are moving where they're not supposed to be moving like the gearbox knob once you use the gearbox knob it feels like a piece of plastic that's about to snap in your hand um, apart from that it's very modern very nice uh, comfortable and very 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 spacey because this is one of the first cars I've ever sat in and I feel like this car has been designed for someone much bigger than me the space is paramount I have so much space I can literally spread my legs and drive apart from that you have all the modern touches like uh, wireless charging Apple CarPlay Android Auto you have a type C charger you have a USB charger um, auto headlights um, auto fog lamps the works basically so when you're sitting inside you are not gonna have a problem at all it's a very nice car so the compass is available in two engine options you've got the 1.4 liter turbo petrol which pushes around 163 bhp and 250 newton meters of torque and you've got this one which is the 2 liter diesel which pushes 170 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque you've got three uh, gearbox options which is a six speed manual a seven speed dct and this one a nine speed torque converter there might be no changes in terms of mechanical parts but that's not a bad thing because this is still the one of the best handling suvs i've driven and uh, at high speeds it's like driving at a cloud small problem that at low speeds the car does pitch in your because of a stronger and stiffer setup on the suspension but otherwise you have a cloud like drive and it's very 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 simple to drive no issues the gearbox sometimes does have its own mood I, it wants to be a high revving engine or it wants to just ride on the torque but uh, that is a small problem that you'll face in traffic however here at the expressway you just have no problems at all smooth riding so there it is folks all in all the capable compass turns out to be quite worth its value when you consider the final product its interior is sophisticated and eloquent enough to go anywhere and justify its premium over the competition this is your boy Bhavneet with the help of this quad see you in the next one